So we're almost to the end uh, of our class here, but th there is one more topic I want to talk about, and it, it's an application of these integrals that we've been discussing. And what, what I want to think about uh, doing is solving an equation that has a derivative in it. Right? Now, we've actually been doing this. You've been doing this for a while now. Um, anytime you found an antiderivative, you were kind of implicitly solving a, a so-called differential equation. For example, let, let's say I ask you to find an antiderivative of x squared plus 1. And you, you know how to do this now, right? This is um, a, x to the third over 3 plus x. And if, if you want to think of this as a differential equation, think of it this way. Say I have the equation y prime equals x squared plus 1. Right? What I did here is I said that if y prime, if the derivative of y is x squared plus 1, then y must be x to the third over 3 plus x. Right? This equation here is an example of a, a very basic differential equation. Now, differential equations are a, a deep deep subject you can take you know you can you can take multiple um college level graduate level classes in differential equations it's it, it's an area where there's still a lot of active research going on even um we're, we're going to focus on on one type of differential equation called a separable differential equation and that's one that can be written like this right the derivative, this is dy dx, that's y prime, is equal to a function of x times a function of y. Right, so that's, that's kind of the separable part. Right, you can take that right-hand side and separate it into an x part and a y part. If you can do that, we're home free and you can solve these things. Right, so let, let's see how. Right, let's start, start off with this guy. Right, dy dx equals x plus 1 over y minus 1. First, first I, I want you to see that this really is um, a separable differential equation. Think of this as x plus 1 times 1 over y minus 1. This is the f of x, and this is the g of x. I, I have separated that side of the equation. Right, now here's, here's how we solve this. Right. First, let's multiply both sides by y minus 1. I'm going to kind of get the x's by themselves. So I'm going to make this y minus 1 dy dx equals x plus 1. Okay, now my next step, I'm going to multiply both sides by dx. Right. If I multiply, move the equal sign a little bit, make a little room. I'm going to multiply this side by dx. And this side by dx. Well, you can think of the dx's as canceling. And this becomes y minus 1 dy equals x plus 1 dx. Now, what I did there, I'll be honest with you, was a little sketchy. Okay, um, Treating that dy dx as if it was a literal fraction is a slightly dubious thing to do. Okay, But... In a lot of scenarios, it works. It makes sense. It, it makes sense intuitively, and it's going to get us the answers that we want. So now, what I'm going to do is I am going to integrate both sides of this. The integral of y minus one is y squared over two minus y, and the integral of x squared of x plus one is x squared over two plus x plus a constant. You only need one constant, right? It's enough to put it on just one side, right? And really, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here, right? I'm gonna leave this as my answer. Uh, I I really can't solve that left side for y. I mean, quadratic formula. It's gonna be an, an enormous mess if you were to try to do that. And you're really not. You're you're gonna have that plus or minus in there, so you're really not gonna get a function either way. Okay, so there really isn't a whole lot I can do to clean this up, so I'm going to leave it 
at this. Okay, now, before we move on, I, I do want to talk about, uh, for, for a minute about that constant, right? Because I kind of just threw it out there that you can just put it on one side. Well, it, 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 to see why, think of it this way. Let's, let's put a subscript here. Call this C1. And I'm going to add a second constant in here, which some of you may have been thinking, well, you know, I, I integrated twice, so shouldn't I have a constant on each side? Right, well, now look, here, here's what we're going to do. Move that C2 over. Make this y squared over 2 minus y equals x squared over 2 plus x plus C1 minus C2. Well, the difference of two constants is a constant, right? So I'm just going to replace that C1 minus C2 with C, and there you go. Now you're back where I started, All right? That's why it's sufficient to only put one constant on one side of your solution. Okay, so let's let's take a look at this one. Right, let's let's try this thing out. Um, first, remember our remember our goal. My goal is to separate this thing. My goal is to get the x's on one side and the y's on the other. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. First, just to make my life easier, let, let's divide both sides by two. Right, this is going to become dy dx uh, times. Let, let, let me let me okay. Let me do two things at once. Let me split this up. This is the square root of x times the square root of y plus one equals one half. All right. Now do you see where this is going? Right. I'm going to divide both sides by the square root of x. dy dx times the square root of y plus one equals uh, 1 over 2 square roots of x. Now let's move the dx over. And when, well, when I do that, I'm also going to change these radicals to fractional exponents so I can apply my integration rule. So this will be dy. Whoops, I put them in the right order. Make it y plus 1 to the 1 half dy equals 1 half x to the negative 1 half dx. And now I can integrate. Right? Now I can integrate this thing. Uh, the right side, this is y plus 1 to the 3 halves over 3 halves equals, uh, let's see, 1 half x to the 1 half over 1 half plus a constant. Okay, well, this right, side, this right side is nice. These one-halves, they just cancel. So this becomes two-thirds uh, y plus one to the three-halves equals x to the one-half plus a constant. Okay, now this time, I think I can solve this for y. Right, I, th I think I'm going to be okay trying to solve this. So look, let's multiply both sides by three halves. Right, everything gets to three halves. So this becomes y plus one to the three halves equals three halves x to the one half plus a constant. I, you know, you really would be okay if you just left it at c, but if it bugs you, just put another letter in here. Called K, <coughs> right? That that K is the constant two thirds times the constant C. Excuse me. This should be uh, two thirds, not three halves. Now take uh, raise both sides to the two thirds power. The left side becomes y plus one equals two thirds x to the one half plus the constant to the two-thirds power, and then subtract the one. Y equals two-thirds X to the one-half plus K to the two-thirds minus one. And that's it. There's my solution. All right, that's what it's going to look like. Okay, how about, go ahead and try this one out. All right, try this yourself, see what you come up with. All right, well, I'm going to do the same thing here, right? I'm going to move the dx over. So this becomes dy 
equals y e to the 2x plus 1 dx, and then divide by y. So dy over y equals e to the 2x plus 1 dx, and then integrate both sides. The left side, this is the log of y. The right side, do a u substitution here, right, if you need to. This is 1 half e to the 2x plus 1 plus a constant. And I would really leave it there. I mean, you, you, could, you could solve this for y. You could say um, e to the log of y is equal to e to the 1 half e to the 2x plus 1 plus c. e to the log of y is just y. But this right-hand side is e to a power of e. The right-hand side at this point is a hot flaming mess. It, it's, it's really more trouble than it's worth. Um, this is probably the more elegant of the two, so I would just leave it at that. Okay, so what's next? Um, applications. Right, we're we're going to look at, at a couple of practical applications of this. One of them is from, um, well, it's exponential growth, so it, it, it's used in a lot of things. It's used in physics um, for exponential decay, radioactive decay. It's used in biology for population growth. Uh, and we're going to look at um, a second one called Newton's Law of Cooling.